Hello everyone, welcome to Spec eLearn, the online learning channel dedicated to chemical engineers. Interview questions, distillation part 3. Subscribe now before you forget. By subscribing, you will get notification when a new video is published so that you do not miss out on any videos. In this video, we will discuss five questions in distillation process with answers. For every question, you are given 20 seconds to think about the answer. Then the answer will appear. Check your answer is correct. Wherever required, detailed explanation is given. We have discussed 15 questions so far in distillation through two videos. We will start with question number 16 in this video. Question number 16. What is the difference between a single pause tray and a multi pause tray? Your time starts now. Your time is up. The answer. A single post tray has one inlet down comer and one outlet down comer. The liquid entering the tray from the inlet downcomer flows across the tray and overflows to the outlet downcomer to enter the next tray below. We call it one pause for the liquid. A multi pause tray has more than two downcomers, hence, they have two pauses or more for the liquid. As the liquid loading on the tray is increased, the liquid froth level on the tray increases. Under higher liquid loading on the tray, column operation with a single downcomer faces instability. To limit the liquid level on the tray, to have a stable hydraulics, multi downcomers are used. Number of pauses will depend on the liquid loading and hence the number of downcomers. This figure illustrates a tray with a single downcomer. This sketch illustrates a multi pause tray. Can you guess how many passes are there in the tray? Yes, there are four passes. It is a four pass multi downcomer tray. Shown in this figure is a multi downcomer tray. By splitting the liquid into multiple flow paths, the wire loading is decreased significantly. Question number 17. You are given a sketch of a distillation column as shown below. You explain how will you measure the pressure drop across the column. Your time starts now. The 
the time is up. The answer. The pressure drop is measured as explained in the sketch. The imbalances of column pressures at the bottom and top of the column is individually tapped as shown in the figure and fed to your differential pressure transmitter which gives the output as a column differential pressure. It is not possible to measure the pressure drop across the tray. That is the reason why the column total pressure drop is measured. So the column total pressure drop is the individual tray pressure drop multiplied by the number of trays. When I visit campuses for guest lectures, I get questions from students. Sir, where in the column is the pressure higher? At the bottom or at the top? Many of you watching this video also may be having the same doubt at this moment as we discuss. I would like to make it clear here. It is a reboiler that generates and drives a vapor up through the column for vapor liquid contact and mass transfer. The energy for the vapor flow is provided by the reboiler. Hence, the pressure is highest at the bottom. Fluid flows through the process equipment, be it piping or heat exchanger or mass transfer equipment etc. always faces resistance to flow. This causes the pressure of the flowing fluid to decrease. Hence, the pressure of the fluid decreases in the direction of flow. So, in distillation column, vapor flows from the reboiler to the bottom of the column and then to the top through the trays. So, P2, the pressure at the bottom, is greater than P1, the pressure at the top. Pressure drop is one of the important hydraulic parameters in analyzing sieve tray performance. Pressure drop measurement for indication and control purpose is integral part of process design development. Question number 18. What are the factors that contribute to the tray pressure drop? Your time start now. Your time is up. The answer. In the previous question, you understood how pressure drop occurs as a vapor moves through the column. Here the question is different. What the experts sitting in the interview committee are interested is the relevant tray parameters that contribute to the pressure drop. Remember, tray is a vapor liquid contact element. It generates vapor bubbles thereby creates interfacial area for mass transfer. There is a good mixing on the tray. So the pressure drop rises from more than one source. The resistance to flow arises from two sources. A. The tray holes. B. The liquid hold up on the tray. Thus, the pressure drop across the tray consists of two contributors 
dry hole pressure drop and the pressure drop due to the liquid inventory on the tray. Thus, the pressure drop across the tray can be represented by the equation as shown in this slide. Where HT is the tray pressure drop, HDH dry hole pressure drop, HL pressure drop due to liquid inventory on the tray, HST residual pressure drop due to surface tension. The term HT is usually negligible. This sketch illustrates the pressure drop contributors on a typical tray. One due to the tray holes, the two due to the tray inventory of liquid. Shown in the figure is a sieve tray. The tray consists of several small holes. The vapor issues through the holes at high velocity. Each hole can be treated as an orifice. Hence the pressure drop occurs through a hole is similar to the one that occurs when fluid flows through an orifice. You are all aware about the orifice formula. We can use a similar orifice formula to calculate the dry orifice pressure drop. Then there is a liquid level on the tray. It consists of clear liquid height close to the tray surface and a froth height over the clear liquid. This is a heat which the vapor has to overcome to flow. So the total pressure drop as we seen earlier comes from the dry orifice pressure drop plus the hydrostatic heat pressure drop due to the liquid level on the tray. I am not giving any formula here. I also recommend you not to mention any formula for dry hole pressure drop or pressure loss due to heat on the tray in the interview. Explaining formula leads to more questions that may be difficult to explain sometimes. You will get caught. Yes, unless you are confident, do not attempt to take the chance. You explain nicely with a sketch that is what is needed. Those interested in the formula can learn for your interest. Pressure drop is an important parameter. High pressure drops results in high operating temperatures at the bottom. When a tray column is used for heat sensitive products which gets degraded at higher temperatures, the pressure drop becomes an important design parameter. Pressure drop can be particularly important in vacuum distillation because high value increases reboil temperature and usually reduces relative volatility in the lower part of the column. Pressure drop is taken into consideration while designing the plate parameters. What are the typical values of pressure drop across the tray in a distillation column? The typical values of pressure drop across the tray are A for a conventional tray 8 milli for B low pressure drop tray 3 millibar. Question number 19. What is the difference between rectification, stripping and fractionation? Your time starts 
now your time is up the answer rectification system remove heavy material from light product stepping system removes light material from heavy product fractionation system removes heavy material from light product and light material from heavy product at the same time a complex fractionation involves making of multiple products from either a single tower or a multiple or complex of towers with the recycled stream between them a good example of multiple product tower is a refinery crude distillation tolum which produces naphtha kerosene and diesel from the same tower shown in this figure is a multiple product fractionation tower for atmospheric crude distillation question number 20 what is k factor what are the operating parameters that influences the value of k your time starts now your time is up the answer k factor is a ratio of mole fraction of a component in the vapor phase to that in the liquid phase in equilibrium in a multi component mixer the k value of component i is expressed as x of i divided by y of i k value is also known as equilibrium value k factor is used in the analysis of multi component distillation process k value is a function of temperature and pressure hence variation of pressure and temperatures causes the value to change in a distillation column the pressure is always fixed the temperature of each stage varies depending on the tray product composition hence at a given pressure the k value changes from stage to stage This graph is a K value profile for propylene propane mixer at 17 bar across the stages obtained by simulation. Please subscribe to our channel and get updates on the upcoming courses by pressing the subscribe button. It will motivate us to produce free knowledge rich video content for you with this we have come to the end of the presentation hope this presentation with narration and animation was useful please give your comments if any about this course after you have finished viewing the video share with your friends and colleagues to reach out to large number of career oriented professionals and students 
who are desirous of developing job oriented skills and enhancing the knowledge base thank you for watching